Hello, and welcome to the Reclaimed Heirloom. My name's Christina. This piece is my own personal dresser that I've chalk painted in the past, and I want to create a new finish. I'm going to talk you through all the techniques and supplies I use to create a Swedish Gustavian style. And again, I'm going to talk you through all the steps that I do. I'm going to start with a base coat in the Annie Salone chalk paint in Paris Gray. As I mentioned, this is a dresser that is a personal um, furniture piece of mine, and I've had a previous paint uh, finish on here, and I wanted to make sure that I removed all the wax and finish top coat off of it, so I just decided to simplify and go ahead and sand it and make sure that all the finish was off. And there is still some residual paint on there, but it's, it's honestly, it's not a big deal. You don't have to sand to use chalk paint. What is really important is any seal protection or varnish top coats or lacquers is to be removed. And you can use TSP cleaner, you can use mineral spirits, but you definitely want to make sure you have that off your piece before applying a new coat. I've completed my first coat of the Paris Gray and I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and I'm going to come back and put a second coat on there. I never wash my brushes until the very end, and I'm gonna to explain to you why a little bit later on. So using Minwax Gel Stain, I'm gonna use Walnut, and I'm also gonna use Chestnut, and I'm gonna apply a base in Chestnut. The reason is, with the Royal Stencil Design Studios, I'm gonna do a herringbone pattern on this dresser tabletop. The Royal Design Studio stencils are perfect because they give you everything that you need to make a flawless stencil tile print. This gel stain is super thick. It's not like a regular wood stain. It's got a bit more of a putty-like feel to it. So again, it's super thick and a little tiny bit goes a long way. You can use a paintbrush, but I always prefer using the disposable sponge applicators. I just, it's just a personal preference. It really doesn't matter which one you use from brush to the sponge applicator. All I'm doing is going ahead and getting this on and it is so easy. And at the end, I just go in a nice horizontal stroke at the end just to smooth it right out. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this chestnut gel stain dry. And now that my base coat is completely dry, I'm gonna go ahead and add a second coat of the Annie Salone Paris Gray. No specific brush stroke involved. I'm literally every which way, just some random brush strokes to create some textures. I didn't have enough French linen or cocoa, but I had just enough between the two that I'm just gonna kind of combine them together. And I'm going to create some really, really fun textures with this salt wash medium. And I literally only need about two ounces for this entire dresser. I'm going to use a natural sea sponge as well as chippy brushes for the two paint colors, the French linen and the cocoa. And literally all I'm going to do is just slap on a little bit of both of them. And with my moist sea sponge, I'm going to grab a little bit of that salt wash and I'm dapping it into the salt wash container and I'm applying it on top of the paint and dabbing it into the paint as I go. I'm just going to keep layering. That's all I'm doing. Adding paint, adding salt wash, adding paint. And this way I can put the textures where I want. I can layer it. And really what I want to do is create this really old, old nostalgic look. And to create it, it has to be as random as possible. So again, there is absolutely no specific pattern when it comes to the colors. You're literally slapping them on there as well as that salt wash. But really what I'm doing at this stage, at this point, is I'm just creating a base of textures and where I want them. And as, as I mentioned, I want them to be very, very random. As I really want to create some old, old century history onto this piece. Salt wash is a super fun uh, texture medium you can use. And it's actually just as easy to go ahead and mix your paint and your salt wash 50-50 and do 
an application like that. The reason I want to do it like this is because I can control where I want my textures, how thick I want them, and I don't want it to be on every square meter of this piece. I want it to be very, very random. I'm using my sea sponge and cleaning it off and offloading any of the extra paint and salt wash and giving it a good ring out. I don't mind that there's a bit of water, but I only want it very, very damp. So again, at this stage, from the base coat of the gray, all I'm doing is taking the French linen and that cocoa, and I'm creating all these different tones, adding that salt wash where I want it with my sea sponge, and I'm creating lots of highs and low points, which is really important for our next few steps. So next thing I'm going to do is I am going to be adding, this is a pure white chalk paint by Annie Salone. And this, all I'm doing is getting into the low points with this tiny, tiny little chip brush. And you can use any brushes that you're comfortable with. I do recommend with salt wash to use a old chippy brush. Um, it can be quite destructive on the brushes. So I'm just playing it safe. You wanna use something that is not highly expensive. And chippy brushes for this type of finish and this kind of texture is perfect. So again, all you're seeing me do here is literally just creating a little bit of highlights in the low points of my texture. For the next step that I'm going to do, I'm gonna use an on fleur, which is a chocolate brown, a graphite, which is a dark gray black chalk paint color, as well as Louis Blue. I always say Louis, but it's Louis Blue. And I have a previous mix I made for my uh, tutorials in the past of Greek blue and some graphite, which really gives it an aged blue color. I'm starting with the brown chalk paint and I'm just in random. All I want to do now is on my high points is I would like to create some low lights. So I use some highlights with the white. Now I'm creating some low lights with the brown. But on top of creating the low lights, I'm gonna add even more texture. And again, it's gonna be very, very random. The one thing I wanna make a note with is usually with using chalk paint is you would normally be using a lot of water. Whereas I'm using salt wash, hence the word salt. Salt is actually um, eating up the moisture in the paint. So it's drying everything very, very quickly. And that's the exact result I want for this type of finish. And I don't want to confuse you. So you're relying on the moisture of the paint and you're relying on that little tiny bit of moisture when you're using your sea sponge. And that's all you're going to use at this stage. You're not going to be using a, a spray water bottle. Because you're making so many layers, you're actually relying on the salt wash to do a lot of the blending for you rather than water, because water would be a number one source with blending. I'm using my chippy brush just to feather in those low lights that I've created. And again, I'm just adding in the low lights, adding in that little bit of salt wash, very, very random in places I want that dark shadowing to start to happen. Because the salt and the salt wash is eating up the moisture in the paint, everything is drying even quicker than just with chalk paint on its own. So no worries about worrying about your layers drying. I can guarantee you they'll be dry. I promise you as we continue on, this will actually make sense. To create an authentic mid to early 18th century um, historic looks, you really, really want to create a, a worn effect from condensation and humidity and storage and all of these wear factors. In order to achieve that, that's why you want really, really random texture. You also want really random high and low toned colors. So the colors that I've picked really can give you this historically old look, but it's very, very authentic looking. I have in the past used sandpapers and things like that, but I never get, it doesn't look as organic as when I do it like this. So going back to my gel stain, I applied the chestnut Minwax gel stain. 
Now I'm applying the Walnut, which is going to be a darker tone. And I'm setting up my stencil, and I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. I wouldn't normally use a roller for a gel stain, but for a stencil experiment, I didn't really see how else I could do this without lifting that stencil. And because those lines are so thin, the last thing you want to do with any type of stenciling is bring your stencil up because it's going to allow any type of color um, achievement you're doing seep under that and I don't want it. And gel stain takes a while to dry so I'm just going to use my hot air gun. You could use a hair dryer very carefully just to speed that process up. But this was a total experiment. I had it visioned in my mind. The old historic herringbone wood pattern you see in really, really old European homes. It was very, very popular and it would have this two-tone to it. So I'm just trying to recreate this look for the tabletop. And I don't really even know where I got the inspiration from, but I guess it just kind of somehow leaked into my head and it stuck in there. And when I saw this, I thought I'd pull it together to see how it would turn out. And I am loving the results. So I've done this in a previous tutorial where you can actually use gel stain over chalk paint. So I've decided with this particular design, I'm going to go ahead and actually use it on the legs and I'm going to show you exactly how that works. So now I'm going to go ahead and start adding those blue tones that I had picked. So I have a Louis blue, but the one that I'm putting on right now is that mix of a Greek blue, which is a bit richer, it's a bit deeper, mixed with that uh, black chalk paint. And the course of action and what I'm doing is exactly what I was doing before. I apply the paint, add the salt wash, apply the paint again and you're literally mashing them in together and this is creating very random short um, thick thin textures as well as fissures and this is again it's just giving it really old old organic age and again because that salt wash is eating up the moisture in the paint I can go back with any chippy brush and I can blend and it's actually very similar to a dry brush. So you can blend it as much as you need to and literally start to over, overlap your blue tones. So again, we're making all of these random, random um, textures and all these different tones. And as it keeps coming together, I just absolutely love it. And I really felt that it was giving me that uh, Gustanavian Swedish style and also the colors that I chose um, uh, for this particular project also are very popular in the old old Swedish looks. So to create a smoother transition between all these different color tones, I'm actually going back and I'm using that cocoa French linen and I'm jumping back and forth. So it's actually a little bit tricky to try to follow because I'm grabbing a little bit of this, I'm grabbing a little bit of that, and I'm going back and grabbing some more salt wash. And this is where you just really honestly just play have fun with it you can't go wrong because if you have too much of a color here or you're not happy with the shading there just keep overlapping them and if anything you're just creating even more beautiful old world texture and tones it's gorgeous And as I mentioned before, what I really love about doing the salt wash in this particular style or technique is because it's literally sucking all of the moisture out and drying things right away. So I can go back with any of my chippy brushes and keep feathering. So at certain points, that's what you're seeing me do is I'm just feathering. So I'm bringing my lighter and darker tones and just feathering them in together so the paint colors don't chop out so much. So again, I don't have a particular pattern on which I'm trying to achieve. I'm literally putting it on, shading around, and stepping back and creating my highs and low points where I like them. I went ahead and finished our entire tabletop and I just love it. 
Again, I wanted to try to get up a little bit more close and personal here so you can see exactly how I'm adding the paint, adding the salt wash, then adding some more paint. And I'm grabbing all of these colors between the French linen, cocoa, the Louis blue, as well as the Greek blue, and I'm just going around constant and random, creating my highlights and my low lights, and I'm just having a blast. And you just gotta pull that artistic character out of yourself and sit down and play with it. You can always put all of your supplies into a Ziploc, walk away and come back. You don't have to sit down all at the same time to do it. And at any given time, you can grab your brushes you use for that base color, the Paris Gray, and you can start adding that back in on top. Again, you're just creating layer after layer and it looks fantastic. So here's where I'm gonna use that gel stain in the walnut on top of chalk paint because I wanted to create the legs and the base of this uh, back to a very refined wood. And I think in between these very rich wood tones, it gives a really nice regal look to the piece. Again, you can use a paintbrush if you prefer, but if you want to use the disposable uh, sponge applicators, you, as you can see, they, it works both ways. Now that I have completed uh, my finishes, I'm going to go ahead and put a lacquer finish on this. And I find it a little bit easier with a lacquer just because it, um, being a liquid, it just flows, especially with all the texture, a little bit easier than applying with a wax and a cloth. So it's going to seal and protect all of the chalk paint and salt wash finish we completed with. Now I'm gonna use dark wax, white wax, and black wax to do uh, shadowing. Using decorative waxes, it's always super handy to have separate wax brushes for each of your colors. This is a previous mix I've done. It's clear wax and dark wax, which is gonna make it a little bit more translucent, as well as easier to apply and remove. And again, because I already have the clear matte lacquer finish on here, my chalk paint finish is completely protected. So anything that I'm doing with any of these decorative waxes, it will literally wipe right off. I just recommend to, to maybe have have a lint-free cloth if you need so that way if you are you know in a mistake position you've added too much and you want to take it off it will just wipe off so all that craziness and layering and highlights and low lights and more layering all of that craziness actually does make sense and you can see here now that I'm adding in some more shadowing with the dark wax the uh, black wax as well as just little hints of the white wax and again play with it have fun with it don't feel that it has to be exact and you have to do it you know in only certain areas you play with your design and your style how you want to see it but the one thing about dark wax and black wax very very tiny amounts it will go a long way here's a quick shot with the waxing and without the waxing. Now for this last step, it's totally optional. I absolutely love it. I'm using this fresco. I flip the piece onto its back. I sprinkle it around. And again, I'm just adding in another layer. I'm adding more highlights to it on top of the low lights I've already created. And again, enriching that organic aged appearance. To seal the fresco I've just applied, I'm going to go ahead and put a clear matte finish by Rust-Oleum on there, and that's going to seal it off. Just make sure when you're using those things that you have a good ventilated area. And all of the supplies that I've used for this project are available in the description box below. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. And most of all, looking forward to sharing another chalk paint decorative finish with you next Saturday. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share. Thanks so much for watching.